Do you have feet? Tired of the pain every single time they touch the ground? Didn't see that bucket of boiling water on the floor? Well, walk no further! Introducing SHOES! Made with the latest cutting-edge technology of leather, shoes puts the protective layer between you and those bacteria-covered floorboards. But that's not all. They're simple to use. Just slap them on and you're ready to take out the trash. Thinking it's all too good to be true? Just pinch yourself. You're not dreaming. It's shoes! Put them on your feet! Hey guys, and welcome back to our top 10 best indie games of the month, which keeps you up to date and indie formed. Today, we kick off with the absolutely beautiful Drifting Lands, a horizontal shooter with some hack and slash set in the sky. For now, it's just a free demo. At number 9, we have another playable teaser. This one's from Jenny LeClue which some of you may remember from Hello. Kickstarter last year. This game has a lot of charm, but hopefully this sneak peek will help us further uncover its atmosphere and mechanics. Next up is Action Hank, a single air multiplayer racer. Think speedrunners in a 3D world on Hot Wheels tracks and 90s action figures instead of superheroes. And you can slide on your butt. Continuing and ending this video's theme of free teasers is The Rock, The Paper and The Scissors. Made under the pressure of a 72 hour limit during Ludum Dari 32, it adds rhythm and takes out the luck of rock, paper and scissors. Rhythm Ranger is the title of the expanded project currently in development. Rounding out our bottom 5 is Snakebird. We're pretty wary of colourful puzzle platformers that promise innovation, but we can attest that this one is, as they say, legit bro. Besides, who could say no to those derpy snake bird faces? Monstrum is a Czech word for monster. It's also the name of a just shipped out of early access horror game set on a ship. It's a fairly standard first person horror game that, with the integration of roguelike elements, is able to continuously recreate moments of spontaneous tension for the player. There are three ways of escape, the helicopter, life raft and tiny sub, all of which are damaged and require you to scavenge items for repairs. But whilst you track down items, the monsters track down you. This is where the roguelike bits add to the traditional experience. Procedural generation functions to scramble the locations of items and escape transports as well as which of the three monsters you will face. And permadeath threatens to end your run at any second regardless of your level of progress. They keep players guessing and uncomfortable, tying in perfectly with the horror theme. In all, Monstrum is the ship ride from hell that never ends. Dark Echo was the latest Ludum Dari effort to receive the fleshing out treatment. In fact, it was originally made in Ludum Dari 26 under the title YOU MUST ESCAPE! The same event that gifted us gods will be watching. Minimalism, the theme of Ludum Dari 26, heavily informs the design of Dark Echo and makes it a uniquely terrifying experience. The constantly black backdrop and the white lines that swim on top of it work to lull away your senses. This makes room for sound, your only connection to this world, to be more pronounced. It is amazing how effectual it can be when all else is dulled. Sound can illustrate your surroundings, assuaging anxiety, but just as easily ignite fear with new or unexpected noises. It's true that Dark Echo elicits terror in the same way as other horror games do, through a fear of the unknown, yet there's something particularly harrowing about walking blindly in the dark. We say seeing is believing. So by taking away our vision, our primary sense of assuring ourselves that everything is as is, is perhaps a little more confronting.
At number 3, the imitation game of Indies remaking retro classics continues with Axiom Verge. Just look at it, it's Metroid, right? Well, as some of you familiar with the discussion of Axiom Verge may know, the consensus analysis seems to be this game seems a lot like Metroid, but plays out differently. It's something the developers are aware of too, and they've certainly had some fun with it. The narrative begins with a human in an alien world, with a biome and enemies eerily similar to Metroid. This is a game winking at its inspiration, as well as cheekily confirming any player's suspicions that the game was a ripoff, only to later prove that they didn't know anything. What makes Axiom Verge its own game starts with its items that range from drones to teleports to a vast array of weapons. Of them, the glitch gun perhaps sums up the game best. Letting you create glitches is a nod to the NES era, but it's also an inventive game mechanic that can reset timers or nullify enemies. With a great knowledge and reverence of its inspiration, combined with its awareness of identity, Axiom Verge stands out as an elite retro recreation. Corporate firewall breached. Infiltration successful. Like other games in the turn-based genre, Invisible Ink is theoretically caged by the level formula. In this case, it's a repeated ritual of infiltration, extraction and escape. But like the best of them, Invisible Ink doesn't get bogged down by this. Instead, it multiplies its confines endlessly with random levels and layers of strategy that go deeper than Batman's voice. Taking a step back, it's a pretty interesting game for Cly Entertainment to make, after Mark of the Ninja and Don't Starve. I mean, those are three radically different games. However, their mark is definitely left on Invisible Ink via their innovations. The enemy's awareness increasing every turn creates a tension that is the underlying pulse of the game, getting faster the deeper you go in. The guys are even ingenious when it comes to achievements, as it was recently discovered that the achievement meta hacking requires the player to hack into the game and give it to them themselves. With Invisible Ink, Cly Entertainment cement themselves as one of the most consistent and excitingly unpredictable game studios in the world. Rain not face! Tired of all those political games where you don't get to beat someone's face in with a hammer? Good news! Bunny Lord has travelled back in time to Falcon Punch Crime! In its depressing forms! The rabbit leads you to vigorously... This game does not want to be Enrique Iglesias, and that is more than fine with us. Not a hero, a pixelated action game with some bite behind its humour is our game of the month. We'll be covering it next week in our best game of the month video, so we'll leave the rest of the talking for then. That's it guys, remember to buy your shoes and thanks for watching. I am Groot. And I'm Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indieformer. Do you have feet? <laughs> have feet? <laughs> water on the floor? Let's do it again. Touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs>